I, 29 female, feel so numb and scared right now. I've been chatting with this guy for about five months. I even had a separate phone to be safe. Despite that, husband, 28 male, found the phone in my bag and demanded to know what it was. He demanded I unlocked it. I denied at first, but I have had a history of talking to other guys. And why would he trust me now? He saw what was in the phone and was furious. I don't know how much he knows about the sexual nature of the relationship I had with this other guy. But now he's forcing me to sign a postnuptial agreement or if not, he will post my affair online on Facebook and text everything to my friends. He's threatening to expose me publicly, even though I want to handle this between closed doors. He says I don't deserve to have any requests. I guess he's right. I did cheat, but I still love him. However, my relationship on the norm is pretty emotionally abusive. Regardless of the cheating, he puts me down constantly and sometimes I feel like all I do is disappoint him. I can't seem to do anything right in his eyes. Granted, I feel like I have no self-esteem. And I feel like I've been severely depressed for a long time. When I've tried to approach this subject... He does not make me feel better, just tells me I need to change. I don't think he believes in depression. He thinks I'm pathetic. I've reasoned that that is the reason I drink a lot and cheated. Like, I craved to be understood and wanted to feel beautiful and desired. When at the end of the day, I wanted all of this from him. I didn't want to cheat, but I did. I did. I feel pathetic and scared. I'm not from the States, and though my friends are here for me, my home is very, very far away. How do I save my relationship? My friends say I should leave because it clearly doesn't work, regardless of the cheating. My therapist thinks I have Stockholm Syndrome. Why do I just want him to love me? I don't know what to do. He is pretty vindictive. In fact, the guy I was chatting with was in the military and he has reported him and sent them evidence. Officially getting him in trouble as well. I'm scared he will hurt me even more, posting on Facebook, etc., if I don't give him what he wants. He wants me to sign this post-nup, but it would effectively leave me with zero, zero dollars, zero support. I have only my Canadian credit card and no American credit cards. I'm an authorized user on his, but he will remove me from them. Is that even legal? I don't want to sign this postnup, but the threat of public shaming and 100% divorce is too much for me to handle. He says I play the victim. I just feel completely destroyed. I've wanted to go to couples therapy for a long time, but he refuses it. He says that I'm the problem and there's nothing for him to fix. He doesn't even want to know the reason I cheated. Because I felt like I was alone in the relationship yet I still want him and feel like I need him. Help me. Update. Hello, my husband is filing divorce papers. The whole process takes about 90 days, but today he wants me to sign a postnuptial agreement that would basically say that everything he has is his and that everything I have is mine. However, we own a car and he refuses to have knowledge the fact that half of it is mine. He also refuses to share our income. I work part-time, and I know I'm entitled to half his money, correct? If I don't sign, he threatened, no, assured me, that he would stop at nothing and he would tell everyone on Facebook. He would call all of my friends and tell them that we are divorcing, and that he would right away start screwing or dating someone else. I read somewhere that you can't sign a postnuptial agreement if one of the parties is forced to do so, because it would not stand in court. Is that correct? Also, I'm Canadian and he's American. We both live in the States and we got married pretty quickly because I wanted to move down to the States and start working. I do not have a credit card in my name except for in Canada. He has all the credit cards in his name and I'm an authorized user. He says that if I consult a lawyer, he will for sure tell everyone on Facebook because he says in his words that he doesn't want me spending his money on a lawyer for me. I feel like I'm between a rock and a hard place. I feel alone and scared. I feel like I'm nothing financially and without him. 
The only thing I also haven't mentioned is that he's incredibly hard on me. He puts me down a lot, yet I've always tried to be better. He's been verbally abusive to me because of past mistakes that included me going outside my marriage. I have almost no self-esteem and have become an alcoholic. I feel like I'm going crazy. It's like I want to be with him because he somehow convinced me that I'm worthless. Going outside my marriage is not okay. But I feel like I was driven away because I craved his love and care and he would withhold it back so often. I feel dumb. I feel scared. I need help. Comments I love when people justify their actions for cheating. He could be the biggest scumbag in the world, but why put up with it? You've lost the only thing that matters here, which is pride. Holding your head high and walking away is more important. My ex-wife continues to take this route. To this day denies ever cheating. My screenshots and chat history shows otherwise. Deny, deny, deny until they and everyone around them believes their twisted fantasy. She even blames my family for her own undoing. Her parents supported her cheating and tried to justify it to me. It boggles the mind. Initiate the divorce yourself, get some counseling, and start again. In other words, you are still lying and hiding information from him. I don't feel the slightest tinge of regret in your story. It's mostly, oh poor me, my husband is abusive, with an implied, he had it coming. Your marriage has no hope. Listen to your friends and your therapist and get out. And frankly, if what you're saying about the way he treats you is true, I would be advising you to leave him in any case. Story 2 It all happened when my boyfriend and myself went camping. We usually go to the same spot and spend the weekend in a tent. Next to us were some friends in a huge army tent. They were real party animals. They had tons of beer and hard liquor, a boombox, and made a lot of noise. They were super friendly and they invited themselves and my boyfriend over to have some drinks and chat. The first night we went and it was a lot of fun. Well, for me at least. One of the guys named Nick was super funny and really tried to get us in on the conversations. He tried several times to get my boyfriend involved and he asked him a lot of questions. But my boyfriend was just sitting there and said nothing, didn't look happy at all. So I decided to cut it short and took him back to the tent. I didn't ask about why he was so grumpy to avoid a fight. But he just made some sarcastic comments about how you was way too friendly with these guys. So it did end up in a fight. I had no bad intentions, I was just being nice. I'm a very social person and love to make new friends. Okay, long story shorter. Next night, we went again, and my boyfriend got super drunk and just got madder and madder at me. This all in front of these guys who got very uncomfortable. I tried to bring my boyfriend into conversations, and I told the guys how proud I was of him. But he just kept being sarcastic and mad. Okay, time to go to bed, I said. He was so drunk. I took him to our tent and wanted to get ready for bed. But he was being so harsh and mean that I said, Okay, well you go to sleep by yourself. I'm going for a walk. I don't want to be around you right now. I was just so mad about his jealousy. When I went out, I saw Nick around the campfire. He asked if I was okay. We talked a bit and had some more drinks. Everyone can see where this is going. We kissed. I walked away back to my tent and saw my boyfriend just knocked out on the mattress, smelling of alcohol. So I went back to Nick and it ended up going all the way. We ended up in his private tent and had slept together. I was a bit drunk too and just let it happen. We did it twice that night. I never even thought about how loud we could have been and that my boyfriend would have heard. My mind was not thinking straight. It was just lust, and I needed that at that moment, I guess. It sounds dirty, but we did not just sleep together. It was a whole event. We pretty much did everything you would normally do with your loved ones. Like when you first start dating, and the lust is the highest. I just let it all happen. We did like every position possible, and it went on forever. I would say at the time, because of the taboo of what I was doing, the cheating, and the whole attraction towards Nick, it was the best I had ever had, and in the right moment, or wrong moment.
However, my boyfriend and me are still together, and we have a fantastic relationship. I think we'll get engaged soon. I've never told him, and I don't think I will. Is it bad that it just felt so good in that moment? The next day, I woke up before my boyfriend did, and when he came out of the tent, very hungover, he assumed I went to the washrooms. I never saw Nick again. We left early that morning. We were supposed to stay one more night, but I said I was feeling a bit sick. Comments To be fair, I don't think you should be marrying someone who you can cheat on. I know his jealousy was annoying, but I believe people blame their partners for their cheating in order to make their cheating seem more acceptable. Truth is, if you can sleep with someone else and live with it quite happily, the man you are with isn't the one for you. Sorry it's harsh, but I believe it to be true. Here's the deal. We guys can sense and pick up on when our ladies are being more than just friendly or outgoing and fun. We know when there's an attraction. It's obvious. When you're giving that much attention to someone, we aren't stupid. So geez, you think your boyfriend was a little standoffish? Yeah, for good reason. It's not that he's insecure or antisocial. He's pissed that his girlfriend is already getting moist for some guy she just met. Obviously, there are controlling nimrods who are insecure. But your guy didn't sound like one. He knew what was going on. And what happens the next night? You screw this guy twice. Break up with your boyfriend or see if he's open to this sort of relationship. Either way, you get to move forward and win.